Before we start, I just want to announce that this is going to be the first video going up that will be edited by our new editor, Professor Germs, so everyone say hi to him in the comments. From now on, he'll be handling the lore videos and video essays along with the Clips and Shorts channel. Along with Atrix MJ, who will be handling the thumbnails for the videos that Professor Germs edits, these two are going to be a huge help in getting quality videos out to all of you, so make sure you make them feel loved. Anyways, let's get into it. In Pokemon Sun and Moon, we had a new pseudo-legendary Pokemon introduced into the Pokedex in the form of the fighting dragon type Kamoa. While those two stabs would have been devastating in previous formats, VGC 2017 was infested with a certain family of fairies that could almost all one-shot Kamoa while reliably outspeeding it. Due to these Pokemon having such a dominating presence in the metagame and just hard countering Kamoa, it was hard for Kamoa to find any relevance within the metagame at all. This was pretty unprecedented for a pseudo-legendary Pokemon, as just about every other one up to this point was at least a little bit competitively relevant. But not Kamoa. The most it could offer was a good special move pool and physical bulk that allowed it to be a soft counter to Kartana by eating a Leaf Blade or Smart Strike while KOing it with Flamethrower. The ability Overcoat also allowed it to be immune to Sleep Powder from the at the time common Ligant Torkoal combo, however while it was a hard check to these two, it was hardly worth running it for that one purpose. On top of that, Garchomp basically ran the format, so using a Kamoa as your Dragon type was more or less throwing. So in Kamoa's first VGC format, it was pretty bad, but it also received one of the biggest mid-generation buffs in Pokemon history, in the form of the exclusive Z-move Clangorous Soul Blaze. Oh. This was granted to it in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, it was a sound based dragon type move that would target both opponents and deal massive damage. Even if only one of the opponents was damaged by the move, Kamoa would receive an Omni Boost, making its speed, offensive power, and bulk devastating. Obviously, this move could be blocked if you had two fairy types on your team, since dragon moves don't affect them, but for this reason, Kamoa was often partnered with the Mega Gengar. This Pokemon was not only a hard counter to fairies, but it prevented non-ghost types from switching in with its ability Shadow Tag. This made a bad lead versus Kamoa at times an auto loss, so you really needed a game plan for it at this point in the metagame, which is such an improvement for it already. Most Kamoa would run a mixed attacking set since Clanging Scales was such a good move to follow up Clangorous Soul Blaze, but Poison Jab was so essential to dealing with fairies. Common Snarl users like Mega Manectric and Incinera weren't able to reduce the damage coming out from Kamoa due to its ability Soundproof, as Snarl itself was a sound-based move. Ironically enough, due to its reliance on sound-based moves and its sound move blocking ability, Kamoa may at times struggle to deal with other Kamoa. This massive improvement to Kamoa allowed it to skyrocket in usage compared to its old standing in the format. It was on 5% of Masters World Championship teams in 2018, and the Italian player Simone Sanvito got to top 16 with it. This is probably the greatest rags to riches story in Pokemon. Or scabs to scales, I don't know, that one was a little bit gross. Thank you for watching this video, and be sure to leave a like on it if you enjoyed and subscribe to my channel since I make tons of competitive Pokemon content, as well as check out the competitive Pokemon lore playlist. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.